Hi everyone! In this video, we'll load the 3D object geometry for each aircraft into our Terrigen project, and then apply the motion data imported from the FBX file in the previous video. Once the motion data has been applied, we'll be able to visualize the position of the three aircraft within the shot. We can optimize the Terrigen project and speed up the 3D preview refresh rate by importing lower resolution 3D objects to act as placeholders or proxy objects for the three aircraft. Terrigen allows us to import 3D object geometry that has been saved in OBJ, Lightwave, or Terrigen formats. To import an object, click on the Add Object button at the top of the Object node list. Select Object from the context menu, then choose OBJ Reader from the list of options. When the Windows Open dialog appears, navigate to the location of your objects, select an object, and press Open. A Terrigen dialog box will open to ascertain if the object was created in XFROG. Some older XFROG assets need to have their material, scale, and orientation modified. Since this object was not created in XFROG, we'll answer no. We want to copy motion data from the null objects to the objects we just loaded, and we'll do that with the animation panel. However, Terrigen only displays items with keyframes in the animation panel. We need to first create a keyframe on the object's translate and rotate channels so that it will show up in the animation panel. In the Transform tab at the bottom of the object layout, Click on the Animation button and select Set Animation Key, then select Key All. Terrigen displays animation keyframes in green in the Translate fields. Repeat this procedure for the rotation. Now, we're ready to copy the keyframes from our null objects onto the 3D objects. In order to see all of the keyframes for an item, you need to open the Animation panel. Select the View menu from the main menu then select Animation Panel from the list of menu options. The Animation Panel opens at the bottom of the Terrigen workspace. Let's maximize it by clicking on the Maximize slash Minimize button to the right of the timeline. Click on the plus sign next to the item in the Animation Panel named Null Aircraft to expand its channel types. Click on the plus sign next to the Position Channel Type to expand the three channels X, Y, and Z that make up the position data. Select the X channel. To see all the keyframes that make up the motion curve for the X channel, click on the Fit to Curve button at the bottom of the animation panel. Click anywhere in the graph editor that is empty to focus the attention on that window. Press Ctrl A on your keyboard to select all the keyframes for the X channel. The keyframes will turn orange to indicate they have been selected. Right click and select Copy or press Ctrl C on your keyboard to copy the keyframes to the clipboard. Select the X channel for the first 3D object aircraft. Then select and delete all its keyframes if there are any. Before you paste the keyframes, verify that you're on the first keyframe that you want to paste the copied keyframes onto. Then right click and select Paste or press Ctrl V on your keyboard to paste the keyframes into the selected channel. Repeat these steps for the remaining position and rotation channels. We'll pause the video and then return when this is complete. We also need to offset the aircraft's altitude by 10,000 feet because we chose to bake the motion data in the FBX file from the 3D previous scene at the y-axis value of 0. Select the aircraft's translate y-axis channel and select all of the keyframes. At the bottom of the animation panel is an input box which can be used to modify keyframe values. Type 3048 meters into this box. Click the perform an action button and select move by value. Close the animation panel by clicking on the X button to the right of the timeline. The aircraft item we just imported is displayed as a bounding box and at the correct altitude. To change the display mode, click on the Object Display Mode button and select Smooth Shaded Mode. Press the Play Animation button to watch the aircraft fly towards the camera. Now repeat these procedures to bring two additional aircraft into the project. We'll pause the video and return when this is complete. In this video, we've seen how to load a 3D object into our project and apply motion data to it, then modify the result. This illustrates the flexibility built into Terrigen and enables us to take a previous scene and create and fine tune the results into something like this. But before we get that far, we'll need to work on the terrain which is the topic of our next video in this series. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. Thanks for watching.